Hi everybody, we're going to be looking at an article from Jim Spallon, one of my absolute favorite authors in uh, organizational theory. So, what do you need to know about Jim Spallon, besides the fact that he's one of the best? I mean, if you'd say the top ten names in education right now in terms of research and productivity, his name is, depending on who you are and where you're looking at things, he's absolutely in the top ten. Um, he's an organizational theorist, but he looks at specifically at score reform and improvement. So when you learn about Spallon, I wouldn't cover him in org theory as much as I will in score reform. Um, he's more score reform, but he is an organizational theorist. Um, he looks at structure of organizations and how that can help or improve reform efforts. So unlike the other authors that I'm having you read in here that are org theorists first, everything else second, Spallon is a secondary and org theorist, but he's first a school reformer. Um, if you're looking at large scale reforms, you need to look at Jim Spallon. So this is, um, this is one thing that I want you to keep in mind, because this is how you make money, and this is how you're successful in this field. You need to have two tracks. You need to have two different things that you are doing at every given time. Um, that, that way that can position you to be more efficient and effective in your research. Jim Spallon's other work is something that I love. It's called time sampling. It's the best work in schools. It has made him a fortune, and it was the most genius thing that anybody has ever thought of. Um, I find it more pertinent to what I like because it's more what do administrators do in their jobs than school reform. Um, and his main study on this idea is is fascinating. So this is what he did, and I've said this already, but like I said, I'm just in awe that this guy thought of this, and nobody else had thought of this. He gave administrators pagers, and he stuck the pagers on them, and he would just beep them at a random point in a day, and whatever they were doing, they just had to write down in a journal what they were doing. So many people, when they study what do principals do, basically tell them at the end of the day, write a log on what you did. He was the first person to think, I'm going to beep those principals. And you take something that people have been doing for 50 years, and he just, boom, came up with this one idea. And it was genius, because his justification for this methodology was if you wait until the end of the day, a principal's going to forget what was happening. And he thought of this, he thought of this on its own, and he did this. You know, if you do a study on what principals do, it's a qualitative study. Spallon did this quantitatively. And that's huge. He took something that every other researcher had been doing as a qualitative study, and he turned it into a quantitative study, which is genius. If you can find a way to do that with any of the work that you're doing, um, it's huge. So I like this article in conjunction with the White article, um, and, and it basically updates some of the research that's been done on, on school coupling as well. So. Spallon says that you know he looks at all the work that White did, and White's big takeaway message is that loose coupling is good for schools. No brainer, we all know that. But Spallon says because there's we need more structure, more institution in, institutionalism. Tight coupling can actually be a good thing. Um, technical work in, in schools are more specific. More stakeholders understand what the mission and vision of school is now. That was not the case. Um, that was not the case previously. So now that so many more people have buy-in to the organization, you can have tighter coupling. Makes sense to me. So he looked at um, four elementary schools between K and 8 that came from low-income areas um, of various size and various demographics. On your own, you can look at the chart for page you know, 592. It was a qualitative study, but it wanted to see how routines actually related to coupling in different systems of the hierarchy. So if you're interested in routines, this is another one to look at. So essentially, you know, we looked at the design of organizational routines as coupling mechanisms. What were they? How did they determine who was in control of them? How many people were involved in it? Um, he found that I thought was particularly interesting that the technical core in government regulation really was what tightened up the coupling at the school. Um, that was going to oversee how people interpret data, how they were supposed to do the actions that they were supposed to do in their schools. The subject matters for coupling. That's huge too, and that's something that you know we've already talked about a little bit in here. So policy environment changes schools. School structure is formal when the government interferes. Um, and not maybe not interferes, it might not be a good word, but when they get more involved and influenced. 
Um, but assessment is a good tool for letting teachers know what they need to work on in the classroom. So if you formalize observation and assess assessment process and benchmark exams, teachers are better prepared for formalized standardized assessments. Remember, one of the big ideas in this class that we've talked about multiple times, when you are doing benchmark exams, benchmark exams should be harder than the standardized test. If it's not harder than the standardized test, what are we really preparing students for? We want to know what the students need work on, so in a good school district, we formalize those benchmark exams. So when we have new routines, um, that, can be, that, that can be a problem. Veteran teachers are the ones that will say, I don't have much privacy in my classroom, I can't just shut up and teach. That was a very big finding from this article. Um, teachers don't like this. Principals actually preferred a more formalized structure because they were able to convey the expectations. The veteran teachers pushed back and did not like the structure at all. So government regulation and instruction figured together in 67% of the routines that were observed in schools. So now we have more technical routines changing how we look and how we view schools. Even though schools are individualized organizations, which is my big idea and my big mission with this class is to tell you and explain that, not the case here. Um, we, have, you know, we have a technical core and technical regulation um, working together with it. So we look at different ways that government regulation and different standards were used um, were used in this article and how that affected coupling. So not only do we, are we looking at district standards, but we're looking at federal and state standards as well. Um, testing scores were used basically to maintain the focus of the district. Um, government regulation is going to be tightly cu coupled with classroom teaching instead of the building and principal buffering the teachers from the government, which used to be the case in our school system. Can't say that it is anymore, and I think that's important. So I think it is important um, you know, that you notice what we're supposed to be doing, and it's showing that there's going to be more tightly coupling. Um, language arts and mathematic instructions is where all the government regulations are. As I've said before, I came from Pennsylvania. I came in a state that very much valued science. I'm in Oklahoma now. We're in a state that very much values social studies. I'm not used to that from Pennsylvania. Um, but I found it interesting that, this, that the study said it should be selective coupling, not tight or loose. The principal says cut back on social studies when possible if it's not directly tied into language arts or math. Another example of this, when I was a teacher I taught mathematics and I taught business classes. There isn't a human being alive that truly cared about the business classes that I taught. I could do whatever I wanted in them, I had complete autonomy and loose coupling. In those math classes that I taught, and I, we taught integrated math, um, and I was teaching the ninth grade integrated math honors course, so that was basically an introduction to Algebra 2 and Advanced Geometry. I followed every regulation, everything by the book, every day was plotted out what I had to cover. Not how I taught it, but what I had to cover. So when routines are established, it's difficult to break those routines. Government regulation has changed how we look at schools and how we view schools, but most importantly, and this is a no-brainer, um, other subjects are marginalized to focus on math and language arts, and we all know that. So I think this is an important article, and I think if you're doing anything with curriculum reform in your dissertation, um, how administrators look at curriculum reform, um, how teachers interpret it, this work would probably be beneficial to you. This might help you if that's the case. Thank you very much.